drink! Wait! Before we get started in this historical film, it's directed by uh, Ridley Scott. Please hit that subscriber button right there. I see it right there. I will conquer you. It's talking about the life of uh, Napoleon and how he grew from nothing and became a general, then from a general to a emperor, and also his love for his wife, Josephine. The film to me shows that uh, he got a lot of people killed. One thing that's interesting about this movie is with the name Napoleon and, you know, Joaquin Phoenix is attached to this. Of course, Marlon Brando played Napoleon back in the day. So ever so there's a certain image you have in your head about a Napoleon film starring a, 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 a Oscar winner. And this movie works so hard, so hard to undercut all that. It's like, this ain't that movie. <laughs> this movie loves to show Napoleon looking as dumb as possible. They, he falls off horses, <laughs> he stutters and stammers, and he stomps his feet. He just looks as silly and childish and stupid as possible, which I thought was actually a really interesting take on the character. Of course, Napoleon, we all know, like he said, he uh, was a former emperor of France. Uh, he rose to power after, you know, King Louis XVI and all that stuff, got their heads cut off, he, and he rose from a, a simple soldier to the emperor. But he's literally terrible at everything else. He couldn't hold a conversation with you for nothing. There's a scene no. in the film where they're like, oh, Napoleon, sit down. Let me tell you about the politics in France. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> couldn't care less. He didn't give a okay? This man, he wants one thing, well, two things, and two things only. He two wants to have things. sex a lot and have and produce an heir, and he wants to go to war. That is it. He really has no other interests other than that. And those interests led him all well, the way to the he, to becoming emperor. He wants to go to war for country. He loves well, France. Yeah, well, that's all it's, you do, supposedly. I don't think he really loves France. No. I think he no, just loves war. His yes, last, he says it. And his last three words that they said that he did, was, it was France, army, and my love, Josephine. I think if he loved France, he would be interested in the politics of France. He would be interested in how yeah. France was run. He'd be interested in the people. All he cares yeah. about is tactics. He cares about tactics, cares about war, and that's it. And that's why people describe him as a brute. Like he's got, there's literally has nothing else going on with him. Wasn't Napoleon supposed to be like super short or was that a rumor? Right, that was a rumor that was started. Napoleon actually was not very short. I think he was like slightly above average height. Going by modern measurements, Napoleon was closer to 169 centimeters, or around five feet, six and a half inches. Phoenix is only slightly taller at five feet, eight inches. But I think what they mean by short, and the reason why he is known for being short, is because he is a small man. He, he loses temper. <laughs> he loses yeah. temper very quickly. He pouts over the silliest things. He is really just a, a, a little boy in the emperor's robes. Joaquin Phoenix's performance was really good, but Josephine, she did an amazing job. Mm -hmm. Vanessa Kirby. He's so wrapped up in her that she's like, I, I, I am in charge of this. Okay, right. I'm in charge of this relationship. I, you, you can't live, you can't breathe without me. And what was interesting about how they met, right, which I think is was a, a little small encapsulation of their entire relationship, is he's mm -hmm. like looking at her. He's like, oh, she's so pretty. And then she's like, excuse me, why are you staring at me? Like she's, <laughs> <Why is> <laughs> she, was, she was the aggressor. He was too mm -hmm. sheepish to go up there, right? Which is yeah. like, again, very interesting in that, you know, you, you heard so much about Napoleon. You think he'd be like Mr. Alpha male, but he is, he is the not. Man. <laughs> he the is man. He is not. He is just, <laughs> he is just a guy with a regular guy's insecurities. And he's trying his hardest to put forth this great man persona. When in reality, he's just a little boy. I don't think these are the best war action scenes that he's done very graphic they took out they took off a damn they took out a horse like immediately that's the what's the first yeah, graphic thing that you see i'm like i yeah. was like oh sea biscuit <laughs> so <laughs> actually biscuit. The, the, the the tone setter was the uh marie antoinette's beheading that's that, that's that's how you knew this was yeah. going to be a very graphic film because i kept expecting the camera to cut but it doesn't it just her head just falls no. into the basket and you're like oh all right then they hold it up and the gore and blood's hanging all out and they're just waving their head around i'm like okay so this is a very very violent film which makes sense right. because he is depicted as a very violent man but i think the reason why the war scenes were 
less interesting is because Ridley Scott was clearly less interested in shooting them. He was more interested mm-hmm. in showing, you know, this buffoon that everyone has been holding up as like a great man, you know? And again, right. he, he spends, and I call him that because the movie spends so much time making him look stupid. Like they, they it works so hard. It's working it's overtime. It's the way you're saying it though. It's just, uh, and make that him is, look so stupid. And that is kind of the movie. Like halfway through, I'm like, is this a comedy? After he loses the battle and gets his entire like uh, the, the uh, fleet killed at uh, Waterloo, the next shot, yeah. he's, he's like, Sitting down, eating some breakfast. He's like, "I see why you beat us. This breakfast is good." You know? <laughs> it's like what? It's he's like, like he's not devastated. He doesn't care about the people that he the, just cared in the battle. No, the, the the captain was like, "You're gonna go back to exile." Right. He went on this damn island. And he was like, "I need mm-hmm. my country back." Right. He was exiled <laughs> twice, and then yeah, and the then time. and then pulled off two coups like, and, de- <laughs> and destroyed two governments like <laughs> Jesus <laughs> this guy has a wake of destruction behind him the reason why I think I, th- I think don't let me put words in your mouth the reason why I think the um, war scenes weren't that interesting is because the movie is long as hell oh, and, you, ain't put, you ain't put no words in my mouth I definitely felt by, that man by the time you get to those war scenes you're like is this movie still going <laughs> you know because it's like holy <laughs> crap every time i think okay i've got it i get what this movie's trying to say about napoleon they're like anyway here's another battle and another one and another one I, again i think that was on purpose i think really scott was trying to um exhaust you with all these with all these long war shots this is a little bit shorter than Oppenheimer. not excuse me not even a little bit Oppenheimer was like three hours and right. 20 something minutes this was Two hours and twenty something minutes, right. but it felt the same length as I again. And I think they were trying. I think I think I don't know, but I think that was the point. That it was just like this guy, he just goes to war. That's it. That's it. That's all he's ever done. Imagine, imagine fifty plus years of just bloodshed, and that's and, Napoleon. And, and to have that on the screen really does take a toll on an audience. It does. It takes a toll on me. I feel no sympathy for him. I mean, it, it's. I, I kind of felt like he, you remember uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, right? Mm-hmm. Where um, Robert De Niro said, do you like money to uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character? He's like, I do like that money, sir. Mm-hmm. But like, did he love his wife or did he love the money? But in this case, did Napoleon love his wife or did he love war? Well, I think they used his wife uh, and then turned ex-wife which is like getting kind of my point here to show that to show (laughs) that only with her could he really be himself and whenever he was with her he was always slumped down this head down like this and she was the one with her head puffed up you know and he was also insecure and unsure he's like are you cheating on me please say you're not (laughs) please don't be cheating on me no you can't be well were you cheating on me i mean yeah, but okay, but <laughs> you know, so like, like, but the movie is like is is trying to show that he is just this like loser. But his Napoleon thing is just like it's like a wardrobe he wears. It's like it's a it's a facade, right? And he said and, he said this is my uniform. Right, true, he did. What is this costume you have on? This is my uniform. And in the first wartime scene where we were introducing the introduced to Napoleon. Napoleon's in charge. This is his first time being a general. This is his first time using his own tactics. And the movie only really stops to show him when he's really scared. He's like, <laughs> and then everybody's like, are you okay? He's like, yes, I'm fine. Get off me. You know, he's, yeah, like, he's, yeah. he's really scared, you know, but he's trying <laughs> not to show it, you know, which makes him in a way relatable. One thing I couldn't stop thinking about and never going to get political. So everybody who's sensitive, you can leave. He reminded me a lot. And I think, again, I suspect oh. this is, this is on purpose. He reminded me a lot of uh, Donald Trump. Where oh. <laughs> Donald Trump puts on this persona that he's so much bigger than he is. But if you look at him for more than 0.3 seconds, it's clear he's an idiot and he's he's nervous and he's got no plan right he's just kind of flying by the seat of his pants you know and that, that's that's, that's kind of how napoleon was too he has plans he is a smart person but you know having an idea in your head and then executing it are so different. totally different things <laughs> you know so different you need you need a team 
that's that that's going to help you execute your plan and actually say, you know what? I, I don't think that's a good idea. Maybe you should try it this way. And but- Napoleon had that team right? <laughs> where Trump does not. Right? He ain't got that shit. <laughs> Just like Trump. Right. He tried to pull off multiple coups, except for, you know, Napoleon was successful where Trump, you know, was not, you know. And I think the movie's trying to say that this kind of guy is run of the mill, right? He's not, there's nothing particularly special. We all know someone personally or even just on TV, uh, just like this guy. The movie tries so hard to peel back the facade and make you realize Mm -hmm. that this was just a guy. And I enjoyed that quite a bit. Well, and also I thought it was interesting how the people who were closest to him could see through it, but the people who were further away could not, right? So the people closest to him were like, yo, you got to go. Like, you need to get in exile on this island. Okay, look, we're going to pay you. We're going to pay your wife, but just get the F out, yeah. please. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly, yeah. <laughs> but they could have killed him. They right, could have killed him. Right. But then the soldiers who don't really know him, right, he was like, don't you recognize me? I'm Napoleon. <laughs> and they're all like, yeah. yeah know, cause, we cause love they, that name. Because they don't know him. Like, you know, the people around him who know him. He wanted to produce an heir so bad. So bad. And he wanted this more than anything, which is what I think undercuts your argument that he loved his wife so much. Uh, because when he realized oh. that him and his wife could not produce an heir, when he realized that his wife he could not. Out. He could not keep up this facade that he does, mm-hmm. right? He's like, you gotta go. I gotta, I gotta make face, okay? I can't, I can't have you here. I gotta, I need, I need the air. So you gotta go. See you later. You know, write to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and, that, and that's what he did, right? He got a new queen or mm-hmm. empress, and he got himself some heirs, but all girls. So he was only in love with uh, putting out the illusion of him being in control. Right. The movie makes him choose. Choose your wife or choose being the emperor, right? And he chose being emperor, right? He said, well, getting divorced, you know, which, which again, tells me that he, you know, maybe maybe that love wasn't Bro. as deep as you would think. When they were getting the divorce and she got smacked in the face, when he smacked her in the face, oh, people yeah. in the audience like, oh, God. Because <laughs> people, like, people were watching and she didn't want to sign the divorce papers. And he was like... <laughs> I can't have this. No. Yo, yo. Like, uh, you better do it. Like I said, I thought it was shot well. I thought it was acted well from from everyone, especially Vanessa Kirby. And I did understand what uh really Scott and the writer was saying about uh him being a little man trying right. to fit in big shoes. Mm-hmm. But it was just it was it almost lured me asleep <laughs> a couple times. So I'm gonna have to give this film a B plus. A B plus, yep. So I was going to give this film a B plus, but then the movie kept going. I'm like, are we still <laughs> up in here? Again, I think this was on purpose, <laughs> right? I think the movie was trying to like really great at you with how much violence and war is, is surrounding this man. I'm giving this one a C plus. I liked the movie <laughs> quite a lot. I think Vanessa Kirby has a fantastic feature. She's always a standout. She's a standout in Mission Impossible. She's a standout here. I think she's got great things coming up for her. She's rumored to be a visible girl. Who knows if she actually is? But I look forward to see what she's up to. Joaquin Phoenix, he's been a fantastic actor forever. So this movie is very well mm-hmm. acted. We all know Ridley Scott is a fantastic director. And it's nice to see him go back to historical dramas instead of doing so much sci-fi. Although apparently he will be going back to the Alien franchise at some point very soon. So, I, you know, I, yeah. everyone involved in the background, you know, people in, the, in front of the camera, all fantastic. I like them all. I, again, I, I feel like a broken record. I just I just wish the movie was shorter. <laughs> it's <just> so <laughs> long, you know? And apparently, there's a rumored director's cut, which is four hours long. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't nobody want that, really? <laughs> that's, 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 very, that's very interesting that, they, that they're, they're going to do that. Do you recommend people to see it, man? Tough, 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 right? Tough. <laughs> because I had a good time, but I, you know, when I think about like my mom and my dad, I'm like, would they like this? And you know, I'm like, I think, I think the length would would beat them up. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'll say, look, if you're watching this channel, you're probably you know more movie e than most people. So I would say yes, but there's a little star next to it. This is a long movie. It's long. I would say yes. 
but also know what you're getting into. Sometimes I feel like directors and writers can put in every single thing from someone's life, put this here, put this here, right. this makes sense, this makes sense. And it's like, you don't need every little thing, okay? Just be aware that if you do love Napoleon, this movie will break that for you. <laughs> this movie, is, this movie is, is very interesting. This is like, it's like the anti-great man biopic, right? They're like, you think he's great, but he's really not. That's as really what this movie is, is trying to say. I'm going to show you the real side of him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, the, the more human side, which is far less flattering than, uh, you know, the mythology, the legend, you know. This Napoleon guy was a character that he created just for you and me. But the real guy, nobody interesting. More importantly, do you recommend this film? Have you seen Napoleon? Please get in the comments and let us know what you thought. I'm not built like other men. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. We really do appreciate you guys more than you know. <laughs> so if you are new to seeing our faces, please hit that subscribe button right at the bottom. It's right there. It's super free. And if you like this rating and review for this film, please hit that thumbs up or you can hit that thumbs down, whichever you choose. It is your opinion. Just remember one thing. It is mostly wrong. See you in another film. Tater tots. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>